Hello, I'm Carl Bradshaw from Shepard Motorsports, and today I want to introduce to you the brand new Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000. This is going to be a 999cc parallel twin motor. It's liquid cooled, and it's going to be right around that 100 to 110 horsepower range. Now, Kawasaki has not released actual horsepower numbers, but it's going to be right up there at that same horsepower level as the Razor 1000, as the Talon. 1000 and the YXZ. Today we're going to be giving you a walk around of this vehicle, showing you all of the components and features that this particular vehicle has. Additionally, as we give you the specs of this vehicle, we're going to give you the comparison to the three other side-by-sides that I had just previously mentioned. It are those four vehicles that are all going to compete in that same class, if you will. Now, the biggest difference between all of those is going to be the types of transmissions that they have, and we'll cover that here in just a minute. Now, let's take some time to get into the nitty gritty details of this vehicle. We'll take a look at the suspension. We'll take a look at the drivetrain. We'll take a look at the transmission. We'll take a look at all of the features and facets of this vehicle that you might want to take a look at up close and personal. Let's dig in. Now we've had an opportunity to spend a day out in this vehicle, putting it through its paces, and I've got to say, what we're finding from this vehicle is it is solid, it's quiet, and it feels very robust. It has this very fine-tuned feel to it, if you will. When you get in, everything has positive engagement. There's no slop, there's no rattling. It just feels very quality, if you will. Now aside from feel, the other thing that we really liked was when we looked at this vehicle on paper, it has an appearance of being just a little bit bigger or a little bit better than just about every vehicle in its class. When you look at the fuel tank, it's got an extra gallon. When you look at wheelbase, it's a little bit longer. When you look at width, it's just a little bit wider. Now, Kawasaki is late to the side-by-side -side game. They're one of the last big OEMs to participate, but from the looks of it, from sitting in the vehicle, from feeling what it's like, and from reading the spec sheet, it really looks like they took a look at the comp competitors and they basically one up them in just about every category. We'll talk about that as we go over the specs, features, and benefits of this vehicle. If there is one area that they didn't quite hit the mark on, I think it's gonna be weight. This thing weighs in at just over 1,800 pounds, which is a little bit heavier than some of the others that it's going up against. Now, as you mentioned earlier, this is a 999cc parallel twin motor. It is non-turbo. Giving us a vehicle like this without that extra boost of power, I think is a shame. But I'm sure that here in the future, we're gonna see some performance upgrades that are gonna allow us to have the same type of power coming out of this vehicle that we're getting out of some of the big top name brand competitors. Stepping up to the vehicle and opening the door, I can say that the latch here is a very positive closure. Has a nice feel to it, almost automotive, if you will. That's the same thing I noticed while stepping into the vehicle and actuating the slider here for the seat. Again, very automotive grade. You've got a handle that flips up, the seat goes back and forth on sliders. Feels really good. High and low beams are done over here on a switch three position switch so you can get that perfect amount of lighting. The cockpit feels roomy enough and the seats feature an automotive grade type seat belt. It's going to come over the shoulder, across the body, and clip into the buckle. Now a unique feature that this vehicle has that we don't see on a whole lot of other side-by-sides is the fact that it actually has an automotive style e-brake. Now that's going to lock this vehicle in place unlike some of the others that rely on the transmission to do it. Now this does not have park, it just has high, low, neutral, and reverse as far as the gear shift goes. And then of course, the e-brake that we just talked about. Now in switching this vehicle from two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive to lock, it's gonna be a switch here on the dash, and then high and low modes are gonna be done by this toggle. Now as you can see, Kawasaki's left you five positions here to put your own rocker switches in, whether you're doing uh, driving lights, whips, or whatever you want to be able to have switched up here on the dash. Moving up here to the top, we have a little glove box, and then we have another glove box over here for the passenger. Conveniently located just above the passenger is going to be your 12 volt socket. Rotating the steering wheel around here, I can say that the steering wheel feel has a nice ergonomic feel to it. Um, it's got thumb cutouts here that feel really good, and then a nice fatter part here that your hand can kind of grasp around. 
The actual feel of the steering wheel itself is a, a harder plastic with a nice grippy material over the top, allowing you to have good feel. Leaning forward to take a look at the tilt, we have a simple pull lever right here on the left-hand side of the bar. Now this steering wheel has a huge range of adjustment. As you can see, this is the lowest point of adjustment here. So on initial feel, when you go to move the steering wheel, the positive nature in which this lever acts, it feels like there's notches that allow the steering wheel to find that next spot, but that's actually incorrect. If you see this solid bar down here, it's actually like a shock absorber. So you literally push that shock absorber to any position you want and let go, and you have that absolutely perfect steering wheel position for your particular setup. When it comes to cup holders, we have two up here in the front, in front of the gear shift, and one over there in the passenger door. Now that we've covered the features that we find here in the cockpit of the vehicle, let's take a look at what's sitting behind the seats. Moving back behind the seats, I find a very functional feature. Now, most all the other vehicles in the class, the seat sits all the way up against this rear wall here. Whereas here on this Kawasaki, this seat is in the furthest back position and that passenger seat is in the furthest forward position. You can see that even with this seat all the way back, as far as it can go, you still have plenty of room for cargo space. You can throw a backpack or a duffel bag or even a soft sided ice chest back here. So it's protected and is not gonna fall out of the back if you happen to do some extreme off-roading. Moving back here to the bed of the vehicle, we have significant cargo space back here. We've got D-rings at four corners that allow you to be able to strap in your gear. As you can see here, they made this cutout perfectly shaped for what looks like a spare tire and wheel. Two more things I wanna point out real quick are the integrated whip mounts. So you have matching whip mount points on both sides of the vehicle, so you can quickly and easily plug in either your static or your lighted whip. Now that's gonna wrap up our detailed walk around of this very striking 2020 Kawasaki Terex KRX. Now stay tuned as we give you the full breakdown of how this vehicle stacks up against its three most prominent competitors. Let's get to the numbers. We've mentioned the motor in passing a couple times, but let's take a look at some of the details really quickly. Yes, it has 999 cc's, has a compression ratio of 11.5 to one. Maximum torque that this motor puts out is 76.7 at 7,000 RPMs. It's got a DFI 250 millimeter throttle body fuel system with a TCBI electronic advanced ignition. The transmission is an automatic CVT with centrifugal clutch. It has high, low, neutral, and reverse. When it comes to the final drive, we have a selectable two-wheel or four-wheel drive option with a locking front differential operated by a shaft. Looking at the front suspension, we have a double wishbone setup. As far as the suspension goes, we have a Fox 2.5 Podium LSC shock with a piggyback reservoir. It has fully adjustable preload with 24 position adjustable compression dampening. It has a full travel of 18.6 inches. Moving back to the rear suspension, we have a four link trailing arm that is equipped with a Fox 2.5 Podium LSC shock with piggyback reservoir. This shock features a fully adjustable preload and 24 position adjustable compression dampening. It has a full travel length of 21.1 inches. While well, on the topic of suspension and rideability, let's take a look at the tires. We have Maxxis Carnivores on a 31 -10 Now please note that this vehicle requires 15 inch wheels in order to be able to clear the massive brake discs and rotors that are equipped on this vehicle. These tires are running on an alloy beadlock wheel straight from the factory. When it comes to steering, it has electric power steering and features a rack and pinion setup. Both the front and rear brakes feature dual hydraulic discs with two piston calipers. The ground clearance on this vehicle is 14.4 inches. Fuel capacity is 10.6 gallons. Turning radius is 19.4 feet. The cargo bed dimensions are 14.6 by 33.1 by 9.1 inches. The cargo bed carrying capacity is industry leading at the moment with 351 pound capacity. The load capacity of the vehicle itself is 781 pounds. It seats two people, does not have towing capabilities. Lighting is covered with four LED headlights, two LED taillights, and an LED stoplight. 
When it comes to the frame, this vehicle features a ladder type tubular steel frame. The overall length of the vehicle is 130.1 inches. Overall width is 68.1 inches. Overall height is 75 inches. The curb weight, as previously mentioned, is 1,896 pounds. The wheelbase is 98.8 inches. Now moving to the interior of the vehicle, we find a multi-function digital meter with a bar style tachometer. It also features a digital speedometer, a bar style fuel gauge, gear indicator that gives you low, high, neutral, and reverse. It shows power mode, driving mode, whether you're in two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, four-wheel plus diff lock. Another neat feature of this vehicle is the economical riding indicator. It also features common things such as a clock, odometer, dual trip meters, hour meter, water temperature gauge, digital battery gauge, a bar style CVT temperature gauge, that is very nice, a seatbelt warning, oil lamp warning, engine check lamp, water temperature warning, neutral indicator lamp, reverse indicator lamp, parking indicator lamp, an EPS warning lamp, and a CVT belt warning lamp. When it comes to colors, this vehicle is available in two different colors. We have a lime green with a metallic onyx black, and we have a metallic moon dust white, which is what you're looking at here, with a metallic onyx black as well. Now let's take a look at these features as compared to the three most prominent vehicles that this Terex is going to be up against. Those are going to be the 2020 Polaris Razor XP1000, the 2020 Honda Talon 1000X, and the 2020 Yamaha YXZ1000R SE. All four of these vehicles are going to be naturally aspirated 999cc vehicles. The Terex, the Razor, and the Talon all feature a twin cylinder motor, whereas the Yamaha features a three cylinder motor. That's going to be the biggest difference in power plants between those four vehicles. When it comes to the transmission, this Terex KRX has a CVT transmission, where the Polaris XP1000 has an automatic PVT transmission. The Honda Talon has a six-speed automatic transmission with a dual clutch that allows you to manually shift it. And then the YXZ1000R stands alone by itself with a manual foot clutch and a five-speed sequential transmission with reverse. When looking at the wheelbase, this KRX comes in at 98.8 inches. That's almost nine inches longer than the competitors. The Razor's just 90 inches, the Talon is 87.6, and the Yamaha YXZ is 90.5. Where the Razor, the Talon, and the YXZ all come in at 64 inches in width, this KRX comes in at 68.1 inches. That's just over four inches wider than any of the competition. When it comes to ground clearance, this KRX beats out the Razor by 0.4 inches, coming in at 14.4 inches, as compared to the Talon's 12.7 and the YXZ's 13.2. As we mentioned earlier, this vehicle runs on four like tires, 31 10 15s. As compared to the three competitors that come in on either a 28 or a 29 inch tire that are nine inches wide in the front and 11 inches wide in the rear. The uniform tire size of this vehicle makes it really nice when it comes to carrying a spare out there in the field. Out of all the competition, the only other vehicle that comes with aluminum beadlock wheels is that YXZ. When it comes to front suspension, all four of these vehicles are pretty close to the same. They all feature a double wishbone. Moving back to the rear suspension, we have a four link trailing arm here on the KRX, whereas the Razor and the Talon have a three link trailing arm and the YXZ features a double wishbone. Wheel travel was another really striking difference between the Kawasaki KRX and the other vehicles in the lineup. The front wheel travel of this vehicle is 18.6 inches and the rear wheel travel is 21.1. As compared to the Razor that's 1618, the Talon which is 14.6 and 15.1, and the YXZ which is 16.2 and 17. As mentioned earlier, the bed capacity of this vehicle is 351 pounds. That's up 51 pounds from the Razor, 52 pounds from the Talon, and 51 pounds from the YXZ. When it comes to fuel capacity, this Kawasaki Terex KRX features a 10.6 gallon tank. The Razor comes in at 9.5, 
The Talon comes in at 7.3, and that includes a 1.1 gallon reserve, and the YXZ comes in at just 9 gallons. Another couple features that we like about this vehicle is the integrated front bumper, the half doors that are actually completely sealed across the bottom so debris and grime stay out of the cab. It's got a steel composite full skid plate for maximum protection. This vehicle is ready to roll. And there you have it, the first look in detail breakdown of the brand new 2020 Kawasaki Terex KRX 1000. I'm Carl Bratch from Chaperone Motorsports. Thank you for joining us. If you like what you saw today, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more action like this coming directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So if you currently ride a side-by-side -side or you're thinking about getting one, is this one that's on your list of possibilities? Leave a comment below and let us know just what you're thinking about this brand new vehicle. I'm Carl Bradshaw. Thank you for watching. Till next time, take care and ride safe out there.